Hello, people. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Friday afternoon and a fantastic day in Cape Town. First up, guess what? We have finally been given permission to dump our masks. Special day for us. Feels weird every time you leave your office, your house, you're tapping po pockets to find out if you got your mask. I'm meeting people for the first time today. So anyway, that's not why I'm here. I'm down at the workshop, the Fitman Center, and uh, the reason for this is that uh, Jana has been pestering me because we've been getting a lot of questions and requests and, 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 and um, about the Thor conversion. So we thought we would just run through a few points with you um, and hopefully that can help you guys better understand and, and just kind of have some of your questions answered. Um, the first thing I think that's important to understand is, uh, 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 is, is the question around why a roof conversion. I mean, um, you know, people get the whole sort of sleep tent on roof type of effort, but, but there's a little bit more to it. And, and, and the fact is that what, what a roof conversion does is it, it, it really creates the opportunity to be able to do a little bit of inside living, a little bit of internal access into your bed, a little bit of an opportunity to stand up inside so so you can escape the elements and 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 you can create the privacy you can create the added security um, and 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 it's, it's definitely is a really nice feature um, and and for anyone who's trying to live in a tent or a camping tent or a roof tent or anything of the likes uh, who then moves over to something like this, you'll discover that, that there's just something really nice about it. Uh, I, I mean, you can literally move from your bed to the front seat of your car and move your car if you have to. So, and it, it's, not, it's not uncommon to have to do something like that because it could be that the animal's outside your door. It could be that um, uh, you don't like where you parked or you don't like uh, certain conditions or whatever it may be. So, so that is a nice feature. It also feels like makes you feel more secure, or it could be you've got noisy campers. You just don't know why you might want to do that, but you can do it. So it's it's a safety feature. It's 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 the the security. It's the warmth. It's the it's the comfort. It's uh, the privacy because you can change inside and not have to do it outside your car type of thing when you're in when you're in quite a public space, uh, especially if you put some curtains up and the like. So so there's some real pros to it. So we're going to run through a few things and, and Jana is going to grill me just now in terms of some of the questions that have been coming through. Good questions which we wanted to answer, but she was pretty sure that I'd probably forget what half those answers were. So she said, well, she'll, she'll ask me along the way. Um, so most importantly, and I think this is a fantastic question, and that is that we have these questions about just how difficult is it to open the roof? So. I understand this question because there's a there's a real fine element to the roof a roof conversion a, a rooftop tent a camper roof any of the likes that we have to find the sort of perfect balance in terms of what's on the roof how easy or difficult it is to open it with that on there and 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 can we get that right and if we can get that right then that's great because we can make it really easy to open but then can you actually close it? Because, because by gassing up our gas lifts too high, you have that fine balance that's thrown out. So, so we asked Larissa, also one of our, our keen marketing assistants, who, uh, who we felt um, could just jump in and show. She's particularly weak as well, so I thought it would be a perfect, <laughs> perfect person to pick on. No, I'm, I'm teasing you. I just thought it's perfect to have Larissa get involved because, because she can give us a nice indication that, that it can be done. So uh, without further ado, Larissa, would you mind opening the roof of the Thor conversion? <clears throat> Obviously pop those catches and then you can do it. <laughs> there we go. Now that is a full roof, actually. So, so I was I was actually a bit sneaky because I left the table in because this one's got low dars, roof tray, solar panel, and then it's got some 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 uh, molly plates down the side and that kind of thing. And and we opened it up. And and to be honest with you, the trips that I've done, and I know 
Joanna can back me up on this. She's done some trips and on the front roof tray, I've had wood on the front and everything and, and I can open it no problem. But here comes like the real test, Larissa, because I could possibly have just put overcharged sho shocks in this, which means it open up easily, but can you still close it? So, so let's give it a go. Um, so I would stop, yeah, so the, I mean, <laughs> it was as easy as that. So, <laughs> so we have kind of got a pretty perfect balance in terms of that now. So I'm really chuffed about that because, and there's a reason why we are now, we have a method of, of further testing the lifts, the gas lifts, so that we can really refine the exact Newtons that we want to get, so that if you get the right company supplying the right shocks, shocks at the right pressures, and you, and you really set that up properly, you can get a much happy, happy space, happy medium in terms of lifting point. So I'm going to pop it again because <clears throat> Joanna and I are going to have a, another chat about a couple of other things on this truck because she said there were a few more questions. So although, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think I should just pop it again if I can. I just, oh, oh shoot, I can't, Joanna. <laughs> just having some fun, guys. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so let me show you. Okay, so obviously it's up. <clears throat> and I'm going to jump inside. And uh, are you going to film me inside here now? Or? Yep, you okay. can. So I'm going to jump inside in. just to show you. So obviously some of the features about Thor are that we did, we had like a bit of a trick in terms of Thor because in the event of your vehicle length, uh, it's a major influence in terms of roof conversion. So what vehicle can you use? Would you use? Do you use in terms of a roof conversion? Because the shorter the bed, the more challenging it is to create the pop-up flaps and the more challenging it is to have people sleeping in the bed while you're trying to get in and out and the like. So, so that was probably our biggest challenge in, to the, in terms of design. We didn't want just one back flap because it would have disturbed the, the, the other person sleeping up there. So we went for a double flap setup here, which when we initially designed, we weren't sure if it would work particularly well, well but it actually worked brilliantly. So, the, so we, have, we have two little single flaps, and I don't know if you can film that from here, Jana, or whether it's easier try. to get inside, <laughs> or, but, but basically what happens is, and I'll just kind of, you mm -hmm. want to come up under here? And you just, so you've got either a left, either a right, so, so, so your partner can be sleeping still, or, or, or not, and I can go in through the right side or the left side, depending on whichever side she is not, okay, or he, depending who you may be sleeping with. Okay, so you, you would obviously jump in, and like we originally designed <laughs> on Icarus, we flip the bed up. And this has always been one of our special features about a roof conversion. And why I loved Icarus so much is because we put this together on Icarus originally because, check it out, I mean you, you're in, in your camper and you can do literally what you want to do in terms of, of standing up, space, movement. It gives you such a cool feeling of space. There's nothing quite like being able to stand up properly in your camper in terms of trying to get dressed and do whichever you want to do. Obviously the big deal, the big question was for us, the, the space in question. I don't know, Jana, if you want to jump in and, and come and chat, because right. she had some questions, some things <coughs> she wanted to know. You've actually covered most of it. <laughs> but one, <laughs> one of the most important questions was how top heavy is the vehicle and does putting the roof on make it unstable to drive with? Okay, so I don't know, Larissa, if you're getting Jana in the camera when she's asking those questions because I'd like you to because I'd like you to see if she's being sincere in her answer because <laughs> nobody's more or better equipped to answer this question and the reason why I say that is you guys did the faces of the Namib tour through okay. the Nam Namib Desert. <laughs> okay, so, so there's not much more than that's more hairy that in, ter in terms of having a vehicle that could be top heavy. Because you run dune faces, you sometimes run them at angles. Mm -hmm. uh, I, mean, I mean, it could be pretty damn scary. So if you had a top heavy vehicle, um, I think I would be pretty frightened mm -hmm. in, in the Namib because they are intimidating dunes. They are 
huge. I mean, if you've anyone seen Perry De Dakar Rally type stuff, those are the kind of dunes we're talking about. They're serious, serious dunes. And, and I mean, uh, you would have noticed or known if Simon was referring to, did you ever feel threatened? Did it feel uncomfortable? Yeah. Did it feel unstable? Not at all. It was just the dunes that were extremely high and some of the slip faces were terrifying. <laughs> but I never felt unsafe in the vehicle. And something important to note is that obviously we went into the dune for five days. We had to take our own diesel. So yeah. the diesel was mounted on the, in the jerry cans on the side of the vehicle even. So yeah. that was more added weight to the side of the roof. And, and you guys snuck some more in in the back. Yeah, yeah we had some in here as well. So it was fully loaded and didn't feel Did you feel put anything unsafe. on the roof? We had wood on the roof. We had the roof rack tray. We could still open and close the roof with ease. Yeah. Remarkable. Actually, it also surprises me. I mean, that's no, I'm not making that story up. I mean, I can put, I'm, I'm trying to remember how many, how many bags of wood I put when I went through the Kalahari on the front tray there. And I was about three or maybe four uh, on the front. And I can, look, I'm incredibly powerful. So, <laughs> no, but I could open it up and, and it wasn't a problem to open, it could, I could open it up. I didn't even have to first unpack to open, which sometimes you may have to do mm. depending on what you pack on a roof, but it actually, it's, it's got a really, really great balance and weight. So it's good to know because obviously th those have been questions that you were saying that were coming in. So I think it's mm. important people understand that the weight is actually fabulous. And, 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 and so for that, I'm, I, I'm, I'm actually super excited because I didn't think it would work as well as it did. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it so worked cool. great. The <laughs> other question that we get often is how comfortable is the mattress? Would we suggest putting a replacement mattress in? So I don't know if you have. <laughs> well, look, I'm a heavy guy. So, 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 I, and so I mean, I would normally go through a mattress pretty hard. Uh, pretty fast it's uncomfortable or whatever I mean you don't count you're so light <laughs> I mean you kind of like you, you lie on top of mattresses and so it's not as bad for you I don't think actually it's difficult to know is it is it if you're heavier that it becomes more uncomfortable uh, more uncomfortable or is it if you're lighter I don't know but mm -hmm. I have to say that we did a lot of research on mattresses because because <clears throat> I, I, I will confess that our previous mattresses we got it wrong yeah, I mean, they were hard. They were really hard. They were uncomfortable. And it was until I eventually got through to Warwick that I'm, because he can sleep on a plank, a bed of nails, anything he'll sleep. And he'd always argue with me. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, eventually I got him to agree with me that we need to source a more comfortable mattress. And we went about, set about doing just that. And I have to tell you that I spent three weeks in the Kalahari and now I've spent another two or three weeks in Botswana and I slept on our mattresses and I thought they were beautiful. No, I really did. Yeah, I slept, I I slept like a baby. Yeah. So, so I'm hoping that any bad rep we may have on mattresses were the old planks that we used to put in our beds, not intentionally, but, but kind of did that. So, so I think we have a perfect balance now in terms of, of mattresses, and I'm hoping that you guys don't need to put in toppers and the likes because it's just another added lust. But bear in mind, obviously, as well, that with the, with the roof conversion, you can leave all your bedding in place. So you've got a, the mattress in and you've got your bedding in place and you want to go anywhere. You just drop your bed, close the roof, job done, and everything's in place. So that's an absolute pleasure. <coughs> yep. Is there anything else that nope. you had? In, okay, so we then I can chat a little everything. bit more. Okay, yes. so, so another important thing that I just wanted to refer to because I don't think uh, this has come up can in I conversation yet. I want to put a light on so they can maybe see me. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should have done that a while ago. Sorry. Can I um, scoot on out of you? Oh yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> so, <coughs> you get out first. So the, so the conversation came up about about space, you know, um, and, and uh, you know, is there going to be enough space in the back of the 76? Can you do, can you do something like this in the back of the 76? And, and honestly, I had a look at it initially before we began and you can draw things on paper and you can, and, you, and it can look like it's going to work. But when you, until you actually do it, until you actually have the product, until you're sitting inside, you don't really know whether it's working or not. And, and surprisingly, remarkably, it's actually, it's actually, I think it's brilliant in terms of what I thought we started with to what we ended up with. I think, I think the space is incredible. So let me just run through a couple of points. We've got 80 liters of water in here to start with. So 80, waters, 80 liters is a lot of water in the back of the 76. And 
And then we've got, we got obviously the benching set up left and right, which allows us to pack ammo boxes in. We can take up to six ammo boxes in here, no problem, okay? 60 liter fridge up front, which is a nice spot. I can access it from the doors and I can access it, access it from inside. Um, we have the cupboards coming through the window. So, so the cupboard, cupboard conversions are really cool because they don't encroach. It's something we developed a long time ago with, with, with Icarus as well, like we did with the roof, uh, with the, the pop-up beds. Um, they don't encroach too far into the back of the vehicle. So you've actually got cupboard storage space while not killing your internal space. So that's nice. And, and what I can do now, so I can get a whole lot of gear into ammo boxes, or I can take my, let's call it my kit bag and, and my wife's kit bag, um, and we, put them, we can put them both in here. Like, so they can both be in place on the bench um, on either side. You can tie them to molly plate on the back of these if you want. Um, and it's, it's done, job done. I mean, it's really good space. So, so actually, if you're looking at it, we've got great space in here. Chairs inside, kitchens either side, six ammo boxes, 60 liter fridge, 80 liters of water. <coughs> we've upspec suspension, obviously. If you're going off-road, you're doing all your gear, you're carrying that kind of water, you're trying to carry extra fuel, you up, upspec your suspension. So we've got heavy duty suspension, but, but pretty much everything else we've done here, I believe, is brilliant. I did not expect this to be such a successful build working in such a tight space. So so it is fantastic in terms of that. I, I, I'm very pleased with the outcome of this and I hope that uh, Jana that I've answered kind of the questions that people mm -hmm. were asking and looking for and, and yeah so if you've got any more you fire them at her uh, online and, and she'll answer anything you need to know. And, and, and hopefully, um, hopefully uh, you guys like what they had to say. So I think that's it. Well done, Larissa. All your training to be able to open the roof has really paid off. Shame, that's six months of arm work so she can <laughs> open that roof. <laughs> I'm only teasing. Okay, cheers, guys.